This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about EFI grounding. There are three basic things I want to talk about today. A battery only has about 12 and a half volts to start and the ECU at least during cranking wants pretty much all the voltage it can possibly get. The EFI has and needs two very different grounding systems. We'll get into both of those. And plan ahead, there are lots of wires involved when it comes to wiring the race car. We're going to make the basic assumption that you have a race car, that the battery is probably mounted a fair distance away from the engine, and that you have two big wires, one going from the positive of the battery to the starter, and a second one going from the ground on the battery to a good solid place on the block. You also probably have a ground wire going down to the chassis itself, but the vast majority of the power will come down through this big ground wire. So during cranking, we probably are starting with about 12.5, 12.6 volts and a fully charged battery. And race cars are notorious for dropping that voltage as the day goes on. But during cranking, your voltage at the battery itself, if you go with your voltmeter across the terminals, will probably drop to about 11 volts when cranking, even with a healthy battery. If you place your voltmeter from the ground at the battery and run all the way up to the engine block and go ahead and check voltage, during cranking you'll probably find that you're dropping about a volt through this big wire. Now if you do the same test on the positive lead with your voltmeter, you will probably also get a drop of about one volt. So now if you add all these up, one and a half volts at the battery, plus the one volt going down the positive and the one volt loss in the negative, you'll probably be seeing about nine volts at the starter, even with a healthy battery. This only goes down as the battery wears out or wears down through the day. So now let's quick talk about Ohm's law. Basically what it says is volts lost is equal to the amps times the ohms in the wire that you're using. So if we happen to be cranking against a high compression motor, you might be getting 100 amps through those wires times 0.01 ohms, which is almost unmeasurable on most ohm meters, and you'll end up with about one volt lost while cranking. So it's pretty tough to avoid this problem. What I get is number two welding wire from a welding supply house. They have the ability to put factory ends on this thing with some sort of big crimping tool. I always have them made up at the welding shop. Also what you're seeing in this picture, this happens to be my race motor, is my big ground wire and we'll get into that in a moment. So now let's talk about the logistics of wiring up an ECU. What we'd like to do is go all the way directly to the battery with the ECU if possible. Now, of course, we have rules in racing sanctions where you have to run through a switch of some sort that's a master switch and we'll go through a power block and fuse before we get to the ECU. And then on the back side of the ECU, we probably have multiple ground wires that we need to connect back to the battery. It turns out there's an easy way to do that. There are terminal strips you can purchase. This happens to be one that I just found a picture on the internet. But basically what this thing does is we have power strips on each one. Each pair of terminals have a bus bar between them. And you can bridge on either side all the way down the side so that we essentially get positive coming in and sharing to every one of these bus screw terminals. A common one you can find out on the internet if you search is known as an Eaton barrier terminal block. We can also get the jumpers. The word jumper is what you're looking for to get the bridge clip that goes between these. And I'll get into this in a little bit. Now let's look at the sensor grounds. What these are is typically anything that is returning a zero to five volt back to the ECU needs sensor ground for the five volt system. What we have is, in this case, a second terminal strip for all of those coming back to the ECU. These are commonly things like the TPS, the MAP sensor, the MAP sensors, wide bands, and drive-by wire grounds. 
We also have what I refer to as dirty grounds or high power grounds. In this case, what I'm showing you is the logic coils, but there's quite a few other devices that need the high power grounds on the motor. So what I do is connect all those to another one of these terminal strips and then a large wire back to the same ground point on the block. These all include things like your variable valve timing, solenoids, electric fans, boost control solenoids, all sorts of things that we'll feed 12 volts to to charge up or energize and then the ground will have to return to the block. We also have on our logic coils running the spark requires by the manufacturer to go all the way back to the battery. So what I've done is drawn in going back to the same block that the ECU is using and then a large wire going back to the battery. One thing to keep in mind is you might have eight coils on a V8 motor. These can have some fairly serious power requirements getting back to the battery. So you could possibly bring it back to the block that you have back by the ECU or possibly return them all the way back to the battery. But keep in mind if you've got eight IGM 1A coils running at say eight or nine ten thousand RPM on a boosted motor plus all your other miscellaneous devices you might get in the neighborhood of 20 amps down that line so you may need say a 10 gauge wire going from those coils all the way back to the battery refer to your manufacturer's instructions now let's talk about these barrier blocks basically what these things are is this is the one you can get from Eaton here's a picture of the jumper this one happens to be cut down to just four screws but when you get them they can come up to like 10 or 12 screw terminals what it does is makes all these screws have exactly the same power of ground for example I might have three on the high power ground so you'll end up with six screws you can terminate to and on the sensor grounds I might have another six five volt I may have four that's also known as V ref typically and possibly four screws for 12 volts. You can get these things fairly large up to around 20 screws total. So you can come up with any combination. What I like to do is have one of these in the engine compartment and one possibly under the dash tied together so that you can easily break out anything you might need to get off of the ground system. So one little test we always like to do is disconnect the ECU entirely from the wiring harness and then you can check between the sensor ground and the system ground and make sure with a voltmeter there's no continuity. You can also do this at the barrier blocks or the terminal blocks where you can use your voltmeter between sensor ground and high power ground and make sure that there is no continuity through there whatsoever. If there is, you have wiring issues. So now, in conclusion, remember a battery only has 12.5 volts to work with and we want to do the best we can, especially during cranking, to get all the voltage to the ECU that we can. These ECUs typically completely fall apart around 7 or 8 volts, so you don't really have much to spare. The ECU needs two very different ground systems, one for the 5 volt sensors and one for the 12 volt sensors. And make sure you plan ahead. There's lots of wires involved in one of these systems. By the way, when you are looking at a data log, the dead giveaway that you probably have a problem is during cranking, what you'll see is the temperature of the water will vary as the motor cranks. Obviously, the motor is not changing the water temperature. What's happening is you are seeing feedback or crosstalk between your two systems. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the guys that develop Megalog Viewer HD, which I use to analyze the data on almost all these motors. And feel free to hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.